Back into uh, session and open session. Chairman, since I've lost a quorum, City Council is going to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Grant. That will bring us uh, to item five, the public comment period. And I don't believe we had anybody signed up for uh, public comment today. So now we will uh, move to item six, the update report by the Director of Electric Utilities regarding customer service, business center practices, procedures, and policies. Billing procedures and LPL staffing and performance, uh, Mr. Cover. Uh, just to touch on a couple of things here. On page 36 of the, of the packet, <coughs> there's some information there about some inspections that our substation department has been doing, and, and we haven't, it seems like we haven't talked a lot about our substation department, but they have they play a very important role in the overall reliability for substations and the system, system in general. Uh, periodic inspections of that equipment is particularly important, as, uh, especially after we've had a series of thunderstorms like we've recently had to go through and see if there's uh, any uh, lingering damage to any of the, any the equipment there that sometimes does not show up on status. So just wanted to call your attention to that. The substation inspections were, were uh, completed. We actually have one uh, uh, in the process of buying a, a trailer that's uh, got batteries that they take around so that when you're testing stations and doing, doing testing like this, they don't have to take the station out of service. Uh, anyway, I want to point out that they, they do that work that's very important for overall reliability. On uh, page 37, uh, Mass and Gale and Cook uh, have been dispatched just about every day in the last, the last week with temperatures picking up. Both units seem to be running pretty good. Brandon has had experience with fourth outage. It's got parts on order and should be back online hopefully by the end of the week. That uh, June daily system load was down a little bit this year. We've had, had pretty, pretty mild weather in June. But uh, as of yesterday, our load has reached 570 megawatts. I expect it to be above 600 by the end of the week. There are 103 temperatures coming in. There's still some humidity in the air, which, which always drives your air conditioning load a little bit higher than these temperatures would indicate. And uh, that's really all I wanted to comment on, but I'm happy to respond to any questions that anybody might have. Any questions? Comments for Mr. McConnell? Thank you, Mr. McConnell. Excellent report. Uh, that'll bring us in to item seven, discuss financial and capital statements, financing options, audits, and financial policies of the power and life relating to debt issuance issues, reserve account funding, cost allocation, and revenue and expense projections of local power and life. All right, Virgil. I'll start with uh, what I do every month, every month, uh, is just look at the residential rate one customer. And you can see since rate stabilization began in December of 13, uh, where the rates have been uh, if a customer is using a thousand kilowatt hours uh, for the summer season as I reported to you at the last meeting uh, the uh, average residential customer would be paying about hundred and ten dollars we also always like to look at a comparison with XL Energy uh, you'll notice that this month uh, is the first time in about uh, two years that uh, their rate has been just slightly below ours uh, they're paying hundred and nine dollars roughly so about a dollar ten less Right now, uh, there is a rate case pending for Excel that has been delayed uh, for some time that uh, would, the estimate is that that would drive up a residential rate customer about $10 a month. So I think we'll see a spread again there uh, in, in the near term. Over the last 12 months though, however, uh, an LPNL customer paid about $123 less than an Excel customer using the same amount of power. So we're still very proud of that fact. One thing I've added this month is uh, the, the green bars are the amounts that uh, are paid each month for the pass-through of power. So, for example, in June of this year, uh, cut out of that $110, uh, $69 of it is the pass-through of the power from Excel Energy. So it's about two-thirds of the bill and, and is a large component of that. And basically, is, um, you know, it, that is our pass-through of those costs. We, we don't add any markup. We just pass that on to the customers. And that's also what's driving our purchase power under or over recovery. You know, as you recall, we, we, we make our payments to Excel each month, but also these rates generate enough revenues to cover that. So this next slide kind of shows over the last basically 24 months or a little bit more, uh, 
those revenues that have come in, you can see it ranges anywhere from a little over $8 million a month to as much as about $16 million a month, depending on the, the time of the year. Typically, the summer is the top, and uh, the winter season is, is the lowest usage time period. If I overlay uh, our expenses on, on that graph, you can see some months we our revenues exceed our expenses, and other months it is below. If I highlight those months, so the green are the months where we overcollect, and the red months are where we undercollect. So you can see over time that varies. You can see there's a stretch of time in the February of 2014 through July of 14 where where it included under collections every month. That had to do with that Dowd substation that we've talked about in the past. But this, I think, a little bit better illustrates that that period of time, and, and we've kind of been digging ourselves out of that. Um, since that time. So you can see what we would normally anticipate if you exclude those uh, you know, six months where we under collected, you're going to have some months over, some months under, and, and it should work out. Um, at the present time, we are under collected, so we have brought in revenues from our customers about $4 million less than what our expenses have been. So we're, we still anticipate, however, that the summer months will, will eat away that under collection. Uh, I've put a projection here. Uh, we are forecasting to end our fiscal year still slightly under collected, about 1.6 million, but much better than where we are today. We, we believe that in the months of July and August, we will have close to 2 million of, of collection that would help to offset some of that under collection that we have right now. Uh, there is a, an annual true up. We went to Amarillo last week, I guess. Ch Chad and I and David went there met with them, they do an annual true up. They take a look at what demands they had estimated and what energy they had estimated and then what had actually occurred. Unfortunately, this year, we're gonna have about a $1.3 million surcharge. The cost for the demand and the energy piece were a little bit greater than they anticipated. So that's why the September, without that, we would have been very, very close to breaking even on our collection of the purchase power pass-through. But uh, because of that, we, we anticipate being slightly below where we would like to be on our collections. Any questions on that? Next thing I want to talk about, and this is on page 40 of your backup, this is the, the income statement uh, through May, the end of May. Um, and you can see at the top line, the operating revenues are about $2.9 million, less than where we were this time last year. Uh, and just to you know, kind of highlight, we've talked about the unit contingent agreements. Uh, this time last year, we'd earned about $7.4 million of revenue there. This year, we've earned about $1.1 million. So it's about a $6.3 million reduction in revenues from that one piece of our business. So uh, you know, to only be down $2.9 million is, uh, it's, well, it's where we'd expect it to be with the loss of that revenue. Obviously, purchase power is a component of that, and the base rates are a component of that as well, which have helped offset some of that reduction in the unit contingent agreements. Uh, the controllable expenses of the personal services, which includes our personnel costs, uh, the supplies, maintenance, and other are uh, down about $1.2 million from this time last year. So we are uh, doing a good job of uh, you know, uh, conserving our, our expenses. The big one that sticks out is obviously the net pension obligation, the GASB 68, that was uh, came into effect this year where we're having to book that. Um, a pension liability on our books. So right now that's about a $15 million income statement impact, uh, which we did not have last year. Um, purchase of fuel and power, again, you see it's up about $2.2 million as those costs have escalated this year over where we were this time last year. Um, really, the, the change in overall net position at the bottom, you see it's down $21 million compared to down $2 million last year. Again, the majority of that's the $15 million. If you have that back, you're down about $6 million compared to being down about $2 million last year. The $4 million difference between the two years really is mostly related to those unit contingent revenues that we aren't receiving this year. Uh, looking forward through the end of the year, I'm really anticipating our change in net position. If you exclude the net pension obligation, will be pretty flat. I don't expect any increase in net position or decrease. At this point in time, anyway, it looks like if you back out that uh, OPEB and net pension obligation and that, we'll, we should be about uh, dead even there, no, no change. Budget comparison. Uh, what I wanted to highlight, uh, this is through May, the first column. You can see our revenues have totaled about $126 million. 
Our expense is about 140 million. Uh, our forecast, and this is not budget, but this is forecast, uh, we're about 57% overall in revenues and about 63% overall in expenses. On the consumer's meter, the top line on the revenues were about 56% of forecast, which is right in line with where we'd expect to be. Our, our history has been about 55%, so we're a little bit above, at least compared to our forecast where we'd be this time, so no real alarms there. Obviously, our off-system sales, we expect our budget was about six million in that column, but we've adjusted that to about 2.3 million, and we're on track to, to meet that forecast at this point in time, as long as the summer will stay warm for us. Um, on the uh, fund level expenses, one thing that's driving that one, as you see, it's at 73% right now. That's because we make our debt service payments, the majority of our debt service payments have already been made for the year. We just have a little bit of interest expense that will occur in August. Um, so that's what's driving that higher. So as, as time goes on and as the revenues come in over the summer months, um, I, I think that'll correct itself. You see, if you, if you just take a, net, a deficit position right now where we are, 126 million of revenues, 140 million in expense, it's about a $14 million deficit from a budgetary standpoint. I expect that to be made up over the course of the year. Uh, you can see we, we anticipate ending the year about a little about nine hundred thousand dollars more expense than revenues but we'll continue to monitor that and try to keep that as balanced as we can but but the you kind of have to keep in mind the summer months are where the majority of our revenues come in and so where our monthly base metered revenue is about 3.1 million our summer revenue is about 7.3 million a month so we will make up where we're a little bit short on revenues to cover our expenses now we will make that up our expenses are greater in the summer as well, but they're not as much greater as, as the revenues are during the summer months. So just wanted to point that out. This I've just added in the budget so you kind of see the comparison of where our forecast is to what our budget was. The biggest difference there is about $14 million less in uh, revenues, um, in, which is tied to our purchase power, which is it's about $12 million less there. So um, the biggest uh, component there from what we originally anticipated gas costs to be higher than they are when we put together the budget over a year ago and so that's the biggest difference again our uh, fund level expenses uh, we are forecast we're showing that we think it'll be below our, what our budget was purchase power is below our customer expenses we expect to be below obviously our revenues are below too which has helped to offset some of that loss in revenue from the unit continued agreement so uh, i'm not overly concerned at this point in time even though we've had a significant reduction in those unit contingent revenues, but I think we're managing those as well as we can. Um, one thing I do want to point out too is, you know, May was obviously significantly cooler than um, what we'd anticipated in our models, and so, uh, you know, obviously we didn't have as good of a May as we had hoped to, uh, but still, even packing all that into the forecast, I'm not sounding any major alarm right now. We're just, we're just going to have to watch our expenses and uh, understand that maybe a cooler year will impact us a little bit more than what we normally see. We were about 95% of kilowatt hours sold uh, April through June. That's kind of a three month snapshot. We were looking at that, it was, which is about, um, I forget how many, um, I think it was like 43 million kilowatt hours less in those three months than what we would have anticipated them to be on a normal temperature year. Um, the last slide I have is just an overview of capital projects that I showed every month. and. Um, that is kind of the biggest expenses this uh, month were in our, G, our GIS system improvements. We spent about 380000 We spent about 350000 on transformers, about 200000 on underground and overhead. So mostly in our distribution area. Um, we, we also did about 82000 on street lots. And then about 55000 on vehicles kind of rounds that up. So. About $1.2 million were spent on those capital projects throughout the month, and you can see kind of where we are. We have about $42 million sitting in, in funds blended between cash and bonds um, at this point in time. So that's kind of overview, and we have to answer any questions. Any questions? Uh, on page 42, which coincides, I think, with the cash budget, uh, we're showing then the, the net budget deficit of 927 and 
under collection of 564, which basically coincides with the early graphs. Well, yeah, he does, except for the fact that this was compiled before we knew about that true up from SPS, the one point one million dollars. So that's why I was saying we were going to be under collected by okay. that one point four million or six okay. million like that. So, so that's a little bit different than that slide. Uh, it's a little bit that slide is a little bit more current information than this the document. The yes, page forty two. And, and on the debt service on the cash budget, uh, we're looking at that. Uh, you've got a little higher number there than the original budget. Is that a timing of interest? The difference there is the bonds that we sold earlier in the year. That we had bond issuance costs okay. that we had actually not budgeted. It, it had not been included in the budget. Um, and so there's been a change in recent years on the accounting treatment of some of those costs of issuance. Some of those we can capitalize. And, and so now we're truly expensing some of those. So. We, we will incorporate that going forward in budgets, but this year it wasn't. So that's why we're anticipating the expense to be a little bit higher than what the budget was there. Gotcha. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Barger. Thank Appreciate you. it. Um, That brings us to item eight, consider resolution authorizing the purchasing manager to execute a purchase order, ACUB number 712915ELD. Uh, I as concerns line item one and three through six, the Texas Electric Cooperatives Inc. Two as concerns line item two, the West Coast Distribution Inc. And three as concerns line item seven, the HD Supply of Power Limited Solutions all for LPNL three phase distribution transfer. Had we, uh, this is uh, for routine purchases of transformers if necessary to serve new customers and replace any transformers that have become damaged that need to be replaced. Uh, it's, it's a routine purchase. We go through a bid evaluation process that includes the cost of the losses of the transformers. We rank them and award on the basis of lowest evaluated cost or first cost, depending on the First cost is within 3% of the value of losses that we go to first cost as opposed to value of cost. Uh, so the recommendation is to uh, award those as outlined on page 51 of the agenda. Yes, sir, and, and, and then the re resolutions as presented. Right, which is right behind that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I would entertain yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, I move that we, the City of Lubbock, uh, acting through LPML, approve the purchase of wood bit of my item seven, and then uh, also include in this motion the resolution we wood bid items one and three and through six, and also including this resolution as if we <coughs> award bid item two as set forth in the resolutions as prepared today. Motion second by Mr. Butler. Okay, any discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. I'll leave that to uh, our <coughs> agenda. And I think we will, uh, we will be adjourned. We had different